Hey everyone, Vinayak here. My Lenovo Tab 410 being a couple of years old has started acting up, becoming unresponsive and visibly slow. I needed a replacement but didn't want to spend too much. And I found the Galaxy A8 tablet which kind of sneaked in under the 20k mark. How good is it? Watch on to find out. This is the Samsung Galaxy A8 Android tablet. This is one of Samsung's affordable series of tablets and it's the successor to the ever popular A7. Opening up the seals, we have the tablet on top and this nice fiber cover. We'll look at that in a sec. What else do we have in the box? Some paperwork, a SIM ejector tool. Even though this is the non-LTE model, as it supports microSD expansion, which needs to be installed within the SIM tray. USB-C charging cable, the other end is a Type-A and a 7.5W charger. Wow, it feels like it's holding on to a slab of glass. The body feels quite premium with the dual tone metal finish. The colors available are grey, pink gold and silver. I have the 4GB RAM with 64GB storage, Wi-Fi only variant. We have a 8 megapixel camera on the back which is the main camera and we have the volume rocker and power button on the top left. And one of the microphones can be found over here. On the right, we have the USB-C port and two speaker grills and also a 3.5mm jack. On the left, we have two more speakers, another microphone, multiple microphones allow for better noise cancellation. On the bottom, here is the memory expansion slot. If you have the LTE version, you would also install the SIM card here. We only have the memory expansion slot on the tray as this is the Wi-Fi only variant. This screen is a 10.5 inch TFT LCD with a resolution of 1200 by 1920 and a PPI of 216. The aspect ratio is 16 by 10. Hmm, it's taking some time to change between orientations. Maybe a software update will speed things up in the future. Weight is 508 grams, not that heavy, but you can feel it in your hands. The front camera is a 5 megapixel shooter. The bezels are quite slim, but just about the right width to allow holding it in the hands and not activate the screen. And thickness is around 6.9 mm. And we have multiple security options available, such as the pin pattern unlock, and also face unlock using the front facing camera. The interface is Samsung's own One UI version 3.1 and it comes with Android 11 out of the box. The tab comes with some unwanted apps pre-installed like this Baidu's app. I don't mind Spotify, Netflix and Samsung free app. Nothing much other than those, I guess. The tablet has the Unisoc Tiger T618 octa-core processor. The tablet is quite responsive and the apps open up quite fast too. I have a few benchmarks here. These are the Geekpin scores and also the Antu 2 scores. There are two performance scores which are based on the Cortex-A75 and the remaining six are the Cortex-A55. The tablet is geared towards video streaming and gaming too. All streaming apps worked well on the tab. YouTube played smoothly. And when leaving the app, we have this little window still keep playing, which can be moved around as necessary. Nice, if you want to reference a video while studying. Display does get bright enough, won't be visible in bright sunlight. And it also has an ambient light sensor, which would change the screen brightness as per the surroundings. Being a 16 by 10 screen, you will get slight black bars in movies, which are generally shot in 16 by 9 aspect ratio. But this allows for better content consumption, which are via websites or social media apps, etc. And we can see more on the screen at a time. Zooming in and out is quite smooth and so is scrolling. Being such a big screen, we can have dual panes open. Say you want to compare multiple products and you have the web page open, just drag and drop to the side and you can have another web pane open. And this is a feature of One UI. I like the quick panel as I'm used to it on my Galaxy phone. It allows for quick access to your favorite apps and also split screen apps. So you can have YouTube and a web browser open at the same time or even two web pages open together. Create your own shortcut and tap on multiple apps at the same time in split screen mode. And the tab works well for online classes. Uh, we are at a juncture where students are moving back to school. So for office calls, online tuitions, this tab works well. And of course, entertainment wise, we have streaming video and also gaming. Games worked well like Call of Duty, PUBG and also Asphalt 9. With Widevine L1 support, Netflix allows for HD streaming. 
so that's great and youtube was also quite smooth with no perceivable lag and sound is really good the quad speakers are loud and crisp and here's a demo of the same Dolby Atmos support is also available. This app was a nice surprise. Samsung Free, which is a TV streaming app having a whole host of free channels to watch. It does use Wi-Fi, but they are free to view and you have multiple channels for news, entertainment, cooking, documentaries, etc. So that's a very nice addition. It's free for now, so I hope it stays free. If you are a tablet photographer, the cameras on the Galaxy A8 are not bad at all, and the front camera is quite good for video calling. This is the quality of the front facing camera and also the audio quality. This is how you would sound on your online in calls or classes and the video quality is quite good being 5 megapixels and the audio sounds great too here are some samples from the rear facing camera this is how the shot normally looks and the same lens has a wide angle mode too the front facing camera looks good and we have portrait mode which has the background defocus effect we also have a pro mode if you like to manually set the iso shutter speed and exposure panorama mode allows to take wide shots like this one Food mode has a focus effect which draws the user's view to the center. Video recording maxes out at 1080p 30 fps. We also have these deco stickers which are cute and funny and can be added to your videos and photos. Wi-Fi support for 5 gigahertz is also available which most budget tablets don't provide as you can see here on the speed test app. The charger included is a 7.5 watt charger which is quite slow but if you have a 15 watt charger from another Samsung device it can be used to fast charge this tablet. The tablet doesn't come with a stylus but you can use a capacitive stylus with this tablet. The tablet I've picked up has the 64 GB internal storage but around 17 GB is already filled up. Memory expansion option is available and you can add up to a 1 terabyte micro SD card. App data can be moved to the external storage if your internal storage is getting too full. The Galaxy A8 is a very good tablet for day-to-day -day usage. Video streaming, video calls, gaming, everything worked out well. The LTE version costs a few thousand rupees more, and uh, the battery does take time to recharge using the charger provided. But once charged, it manages to run for a few days of standard use. And uh, gaming will drain the battery faster, but it does give around a day's usage. The processor is a deviation from either the Qualcomm and Exynos, but it worked as it could handle everything I threw at it. It's a good starter tablet, maybe for the kids or for media consumption. All in all, a solid all-round tablet for the family. So, which tablet would you have chosen if not for the Galaxy A8 at this price point? I have looked at the Realme and Lenovo tablets, but thought of going with Samsung this time, and it didn't disappoint. So that was the video. Make sure to like. subscribe and also hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are added thank you for watching and see you all next time